In this video lecture, we will be looking at the SQL basic query framework. So most of the data modification language statements are built around a framework. And the framework for SQL statements include the select clause, um, where you specify the columns that need to be listed in the query. And then we have the from clause, which is going to specify the tables that we are going to use to build the query. And then we have the where clause where we are going to specify conditions that we want rows to be pulled out. So again, keep in mind a query is a question. So you're going to see a question and then you're going to look at how can I answer this question and pull the data to satisfy the question by looking at what is the question asking for. So we need to have an understanding of the tables that we are working it. We also need to have an understanding of the columns that we are working with for every table. So again, we can always go to the query question and look at it. But this is important because this is the basic framework of an SQL statement, the select, from, and where. So this is the syntax for it. We type select, which is in uppercase because it's an SQL keyword. Again, SQL is not case sensitive. So you can as well type things not in uppercase and that's fine, but we just like to follow a standard format where we make our keywords be in uppercase. So we are going to say select and then we're going to list the column names. You have to specify the column name as it is named in the table. You cannot change it. And then you're going to specify in the from clause the name of the table and exactly it has to match with how we have named the table in the database. So keep in mind that you are separating your column names with a comma. Oftentimes I see when students first write their queries, they accidentally skip the comma between the columns. But if you try to do it, you could get a syntax error. So it's important to keep in mind that you want to make sure that you're separating the columns with a comma. Also keep in mind that in the context of the queries that we are going to write, we are basing it on the ZMAC database. So of course you want to make sure you're listening to the previous short video clips that I've uploaded where we um, install this database or we upload the script for it and have it installed and have it active in your server. So this is what we are working with. We are working with these tables here, customer orders, order item, product, supplier, and we need to keep a basic understanding of how many tables are there and how these tables are related together. So it's important to keep this in mind. And that being said, we're, let's go back to MySQL Workbench and let's work on ensuring that we set the ZMAC database to be the active database because in MySQL Workbench, in MySQL Server, you can have more than one database. And when we are going to write SQL queries, we want to make sure we are setting the database that we are going to run the queries against. So I've listed the steps here and I'm going to walk through that in Workbench. So I have uh, my SQL Workbench open here and you should all have the ZMAC schema right now in your schemas list here. And uh, we want to right click here and you want to select the option that says set as default schema. So what is this is going to do is when we start typing our select statements and running them, it's going to run those statements on the ZMAC database. So that's important to do. So once you have completed that step, we are um, ready to open an SQL editor window and start typing scripts. So I'm going to come here and click on this um, open a new SQL script here. And when I do that, um, it's going to open this new SQL file for me uh, where you see your um, cursor blinking and it's saying, OK, you can start typing your SQL statements right now. So I'm going to first save my file because that's always recommended because if you ever want to come back and if you're working on a file, it's always a good idea to save it. So I'm going to come to file and I'm going to click save script as, of course, all the SQL scripts that we are writing is going to be saved as a .SQL file. So you can call this, um, you know, the ZMAC um, SQL uh, 1 and, you know, it's up to you what you name it, but this is going to be the first SQL script that we're going to start typing. So once we've given it a name, you'll notice that your file name changes to ZMAC SQL 1. And now I'm ready to start typing my SQL scripts here. 
So also I wanted to point out about comments in MySQL. So like any other programming language um, that you have written, especially in your programming fundamentals, when you wrote your Java or um, Python, if you did into the programming, you need to have uh, comments in your program because these are helpful for people that are looking at it. And when you have comments, the compiler is going to ignore the statements that you have in between your comment. So when you're working with MySQL, there are a number of different ways in which you can put a comment. And I've given you this example here and the link is right there. So if you and close, if you start something with a hashtag, that means this con uh, comment continues to the end of the line. You can put a dash dash as shown here, and this con comment also continues to the end of the line. Um, and if you have multiple lines, you can enclose that as an inline comment. As you see, you can have a forward slash asterisk, and then you can type whatever with an asterisk and a forward slash to close that comment. So this is important to keep in mind because whatever you type here, the compiler is not going to look at it. It's going to ignore it. And of course, you're typing um, information here so that people looking at it, or it's more for a note for you when you come back and look at your script that you have written. You're going to start by writing a very simple query as shown here. It's going to say select customer ID from customer. So of course, I'm just going to change this all to be in uppercase just to keep it consistent. But again, like I said, um, it is not case sensitive, so you don't have to worry about that. But in this particular SQL statement, I have my select keyword and customer ID is the name of a column in the customer table. And I'm specifying that this is going to come from the customer table with a semicolon. So I'm going to bring my workbench back again and I'm going to type this comment, I mean this query there. So I've come, I've, uh, this is the same query window that I had open, it's ZMAC SQL 1. And I've uh, typed this query here. You can of course copy and paste things, but be very careful if you're going to copy and paste. You don't want any um, unnecessary characters that could accidentally come into your query uh, window if you're going to copy and paste, especially from PowerPoint into the editor. So just make sure to check everything if you take that route. Um, so once I've typed this again, this is my comment. So it's just saying it's query one and this is my select and from. And when I expand my ZMAC, I know I have a table called customer. And as you can see here, you have a field called customer ID. So essentially what this query is going to show you is it's going to pull all the customer IDs from the customer table and show it to you. So I'm going to select this here and then click on my flash, lightning flash symbol here. And when I do that, in your action output, you're going to see the select statement that run. It shows that there were 91 records that were returned or rows, and it has a green check here showing that your query has run successfully. And when you look in your result grid here, you're going to see all the customer IDs that are present in the customer table for you. So now I'm ready to write my second query. So keep in mind that queries are independent of each other. So that means that when you write a query, you write a separate query and then you have another question because think, keep in mind that these are separate questions that we are asking um, the database. So it is separate and independent of each other. So now I have my second um, query here that I've written here and the query says select customer ID. It's important to note there's a comma here, last name, comma, phone from customer. So I'm going to take this query and I'm going to type it into my SQL Workbench query editor. So this is my second query here. As you can see, I have a comment here and those comments are important, especially when you're writing many queries. It's always good to indicate that this is your second query and you can add notes to it. And essentially I'm saying I want to see customer ID, comma last name, comma phone from customer. Now it's important to note that when you look in the customer table, you see that there is a field called customer ID, there is a field called last name, and there's a field called phone, as you can see here. If you accidentally type instead of last name, customer last name, you will get an error because there is not a matching column in the customer table with that name. So that is something common that I come across when students are writing queries. They accidentally mistype the column name. So always make sure you can come here and double check the fields in a table to make sure that the field names that you're entering here is not misspelled. You have your commas there. And also the name of the table, as you can see here, customer matches with the name of the table here. 
So once you have that written, you can come and just select this part of the query. You don't have to select the entire thing because if you do that, it's going to run query one and then query two. But if you're interested in query two, you can select query two and then hit on this um, execute statement button here. And it's going to execute that particular query. It's going to show you the results in the result grid. And in your action output, you can see that that query has run. There's a green check mark here, and this is the results. Essentially, this is the data from the customer table. It's going to list every customer ID and all the last name and phone numbers there. So it will list the last name and phone associated with customer ID one. So it's going to pull out those specific columns from the customer table. So here we're looking at our third query here, and I want to show this query because to show you that when you are typing SQL commands, the order of the column name that you specify here is how the results are going to display. So in this particular case, we have a last name, customer ID, and phone from customer. Keep in mind that this doesn't change anything about the data, but it's going to change the output of the query. So when we um, run this query, the first column that appears in the column list would be last name, followed by customer ID and followed by phone. So this is important because when we are writing queries, um, specifically if it's for a report for a particular department, they might have a particular order in which you, they want you to write the query. So it's important to keep in mind that the order of the columns that you list here is how the results are going to be presented in your query result. Keep in mind it doesn't change anything about the data in the actual table. So I have that query here in my SQL workbench, last name, customer ID, phone from customer, and I'm ready to run this query. Don't forget the semicolon at the very end and the commas between the column names. I'm going to come select this query and I'm going to hit here on this execute and it's going to execute the query. And as we had requested in the select statement, it's going to show last name, customer ID and phone in our results here. So here is a quick practice query for you to try writing a query on your own. Write a query to show the product ID, product name, and supplier ID from the product table. So we can come here back and we can look at the product table here. And when you look at it, you have the fields product ID, and then you have the fields product name, as you can see here, and then you also have supplier ID. So it's a very simple SQL statement. Try practicing that, run your query and look at the results. You can always come to your product table and hit on the spreadsheet symbol. And that's by default a query that shows every single record in the product table. You can take a look at that if you wanna just see all the data in the product table. But when you're done with this, you can hit on your X. It's gonna say, do you wanna save the query? And of course you wanna hit yes and then it saves that query file for you. If you ever wanna go back and fetch that, you can come to um, clicking on this um, SQL open a script. Of course, you need to remember where you're saving your files on your computer. You can click on that um, file here, which is ZMac SQL one, open it, and it's going to show you all those three queries that you selected. Um, so again, that's how you write your SQL query and try writing this and running it and ensure that you can see your results.